Good morning everyone and welcome to our Gospel Assembly for the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. We come together to pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When we want something or need something, there's often things we have to do first. So for instance, if we want a lovely plate of spaghetti bolognese, we or someone else will need to cook the food first. Before we can have a new pair of jeans, someone has to make them and we probably need to buy them from the shop or off the internet. Before we can spend the day playing on the beach, we need to pack the car either to go on holiday or to drive to the beach. Get all the equipment ready we need for the beach, as well as our clothes and any food we'll need for the day. Before we're able to play games on the Xbox or PlayStation or anything else, we need to buy the games, or someone needs to buy them for us. In our Gospel, which comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39, we hear that Jesus had to do one thing before he could do another. Let's listen carefully and see if we can work out what that is. Jesus and his disciples, including James and John, left the synagogue and went straight to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a fever and as soon as Jesus arrived, he was told about her. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. After the sun had set and evening had come, people brought to Jesus all the sick and those who had demons. All the people of the town gathered in front of the house. Jesus healed many who were sick with all kinds of diseases and drove out many demons. He would not let the demons say anything because they knew who he was. Very early the next morning, long before daylight, Jesus got up and left the house. He went out of the town to a lonely place where he prayed. But Simon and his companions went out and searched for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus answered, we must go on to other villages round here. I have to preach in them also, because that is why I came. So Jesus travelled all over Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out the demons. The Gospel of the Lord. So no matter who you are, how grown up you become or how talented you are, 
you still need to do some things before you can do others. Even Jesus, who performed miracles, still needed to do some things before he could preach. Can you remember what he needed to go and do before he could go and preach in all the synagogues and all the villages? Jesus took time out to go and pray. He went away from everyone else to a quiet place and spoke to God. Can you think about the times in school when we pray? We usually pray in the morning, just before lunch and just before going home. But these aren't the only times that you can pray. Although when we pray we often close our eyes or put our hands together, that's just a good way of showing other people not to disturb us. You don't have to kneel down in church to pray. You don't have to put your hands together. You don't have to close your eyes. You can pray as you're doing all sorts of things throughout the day. As you're walking along, as you're playing, as you're working. In times when you're worried about something. In times when you're scared. In times when you're happy. You can just talk to God in the way that you would talk to other friends. There are also lots of times in life when we're getting ready to do something. When it's really important to get ready by saying a prayer. If we think about the getting ready time before Christmas, we call that Advent. We often say prayers through Advent. And the getting ready time for Easter is Lent. And there are lots of prayers we say at Lent. Praying can help us think about what we need to do and what other people need of us. If we do put our hands together to pray, we often do so with our thumbs nearest our chest and our little fingers furthest from us. And we can use our hands like this to help us to remember all the people we need to pray for. Let's try that now. With our thumbs closest to us, we think about our family and friends and all the people that are close to our hearts. Think about them now. Ask God to look after them. Keep them safe. Our pointy fingers are next. This can represent all of our teachers, not just those teachers in school, but everyone that teaches us things. So all the staff in school, but also doctors and nurses and firefighters and lots of people around us that teach us how to look after ourselves. Our middle fingers are the tallest ones and they remind us of the people in our lives who lead. These could be the people that lead the country or the people that lead the church. And we ask God to help those people to lead kindly and fairly. The next finger is often called your ring finger. It's the one next to your little finger. And if you lay your hand flat on the table and try to pick up just that ring finger, you'll find it very, very hard to do. That finger on its own is one of the weakest fingers. And so when we get to that finger, we remember to pray for all those people who are ill or poor or weak in some way. And then we get to our little finger, the smallest one of all. We remember to pray for ourselves. So quietly now, either while you're holding your hands together or looking at your hands, just using them to help you remember, think about the people in your lives that you want to pray for.
let's just take a few moments to do that. We ask God to listen to all of our prayers, look after the people that we prayed for and the people we forgot to pray for, and to look after us. Amen. Let's go through this week now, remembering all the people around us and everyone else's needs, and as well as looking after ourselves, make sure that we put ourselves out to look after other people. Take care, have a good week and make sure everyone around you has a good week too.